Hey everybody, so I wanted to make a quick video on the reasons for me moving from Swift back to Python. And I think, uh, you know, I was using Swift for the past six months and I really enjoyed using Swift. And I think I wanted to give some reasons for having made that transition from Swift into Python. Uh, so I learned Python and then moved to Swift and then I'm back to Python. And I think uh, I'm very happy with my decision to move to Python again. So first thing first, just for the pun, I think if you type Swift, you get a bunch of cards. If you type Python, of course, you get the language Python. So that uh, nobody can take out of it. So clearly Python is more popular. Uh, the first thing I found was Swift was, you know, in a version moving mode. So you have Swift 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and now and now you have 5, which is good launch. And with every version, I see a lot of changes which are happening in Swift. Too many changes happening in Swift. And, uh, you know, if you're a new programmer, you really struggle to sort of understand the changes which are happening from one version to another. Python is relatively stable. It's just, you know, Python 2 and Python 3. And between Python 3 right now, it's 3.6. So not many changes which are happening. Even that kind of change has happened over a period of 20 years. But in case of Swift, the change is happening every year. It's almost like a new version of iPhone, which is getting released, which is really hard for a programmer. So if it is an evolving language and a uh, little difficult. Second one is this Objective-C connection. I found that Objective-C is completely ingrained. And because it's got this issue of backward compatibility, which it needs to have with uh, uh, with Objective C, which is the parent parent language of Swift. It needs to have a lot of value, a lot of things inside that. So if you look at this particular thing, look at this. You know, if you, if you look at any, this is this is absolutely an Objective C value, and this has no reference to Swift. But you have to have it in Swift language because if you don't have it, you know, there will there would be issue with that. Uh, the third one is uh, Xcode is the only interpreter. I mean, with, with Python, you can have many interpreters. It's an open source language. And though Swift, Swift is open source, it only has one interpreter dot called Xcode. And Xcode is a great interpreter, no doubts about it. But that's only one. Uh, another one I wanted to give you was these long method calls, really, really long method calls. So if you look at a particular method call, I mean, look at the number of things that are there in this, you know, you know, it's gonna give you a fire out, dot, 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 dot. So what I'm trying to say is really long, long, long library calls. And this is okay because, you know, Xcode really gives you very good intuitive values for this fine. Uh, but not really nice for new programmers because you really get confused with uh, the long method calls. Okay, another one is a pseudocode. Uh, so though it's an open source li li open source language like uh, uh, many other languages, it's really still controlled by Apple. So I'll give you another open source language which is like similar to that. It's C, C Sharp. Now C Sharp, it's, of course, everybody knows that it was originally with Microsoft when they made it open source. But the problem with every open source language is that because the parent company has an overbearing uh, control over the language, it doesn't allow too many things to happen. For example, API uh, calls can't be made directly. You have to use something called as delegates to use these API calls, you know, delegates and protocols. So there's not much of, it sort of always black boxes everything within it, within their own frameworks. Okay, so you don't allow complete open source ability and which is, which is really not great for somebody who's starting out a language unless you want to stay in Swift. And this one is another another one. In machine learning, I think the the biggest challenge I found was that Swift, there was this interoperability is issue. You cannot take any machine learning code and just put it into Swift. You have to really convert that into the uh, the Xcode ML model. So you have to use something called as a, 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 a transit language, something probably a Python or something uh, in between to do that. Or Swift doesn't allow any training models. It's got its inbuilt model, it's got static models and its models are not encrypted. Uh, so machine learning wise, it's not really as good as Python because Python is, as you know, that it's got all the, you know, superb libraries like TensorFlow and all of that. So Swift is not there. So I would say for app development, it's great. For Apple ecosystem, it's great. But if you're going beyond that, if you want to learn machine learning, AI, general purpose language, then I would say go for a general purpose language like Python or any other language. I mean, I'm not recommending only Python. You can lo learn any other language, but this is my view. So I would say, you know, Apple's great, but uh, Swift is really limited. Uh, and uh, if you want to lo learn something beyond the scope of uh, the Apple level ecosystem, definitely you go for Python or some other general purpose language like machine learning and uh, like Python, you could go with Ruby, you could go with JavaScript, any of these languages. So that's all I wanted to talk to you about. Thanks very much. Have a great day, guys.